Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have a small haul to share with you today. I've got a great assortment of stuff as usual, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you all. Stay tuned! So the very first thing I would like to share with you all is something that I picked up at the Venner Mall and I completely forgot to share it in the video that I filmed, like my last haul video before quarantine. It is this vintage 1960s, 1970s Tollware lamp. I got it for $5 at a Venner Mall. At the Venner Mall, the last place that I visited before all of this craziness took place. It's in really good shape. I'm going to have to clean it up just a little bit before sending it out if it sells. Which, by the way, if you are interested in this, the link to my eBay shop is down below in the description box. So you can check it out after this video. I think I have it up for about 80 bucks with best offer. So if you have an offer that is reasonable, I may just take it. So it's basically like a flower pot. It is a flower pot, and then this is the stem, we got the flowers. There's no switch on the socket, it is on the cord here. And I did test this, and it does work. So if you are into shabby chic, or you're looking for something to decorate with for the spring or the summer, this would be a great addition to your home. So if you read the title of my video, I splurged. This is what I spent a lot of money on. Now you all know me, I am very frugal with the things that I buy for both myself, for resale, but sometimes you just gotta spend a little bit of money, and that's what I did with this awesome Coca-Cola fishtail Pam clock. I got this on eBay, and to date, this is my most expensive vintage purchase off of there. This cost me $150. Yes, I know. Not like me at all. But something told me just to buy it because it's very cool. I love the mint green background. It really helps the fishtail logo stand out. The bubble glass is in very good condition. The person who sold it to me said it does work. Only issue is there are some scratches on the bubble glass itself, which I will attempt to take out or as best I can. But like I said, I love that mint green that definitely screams late 50s, early 60s, which is when the Coca-Cola company used the fishtail logo. I will absolutely treasure this for as long as I live, and I will make sure that the $150 I spent goes a long way. Moving along with items I picked up off of eBay during the last two months, this was one of them. This is the Playboy calendar from 1958. I will not be going through this calendar for obvious reasons because there is some rather risque nudity as such. And I did just cover this because I don't want to be demonetized for inappropriate content here on YouTube and I'm hoping to God it doesn't happen. I got this for 20 bucks. It does not have the original uh, folder but that's all right. If you would like to see some of the pages, you can direct message me on Instagram, but you must be at least 18 years of age in order for me to send you these pictures. I'm not sending pictures of these to somebody who's underage. That is an absolute no. Now this is another pinup calendar that I purchased, also from the same person for $20. This is an Elf Green pinup girl calendar. And because this one does not have any explicit nudity in it, just rather, you know, risque stuff for 1947, I will go ahead and we will look at the different months together. The art done by Gil Elvgreen, George Petty, Freeman Elliott, and Vargas Esquire were some of the best pinup art of the day, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and we will go ahead and look at the different months here. So this one is January, a very pretty girl dressed in a dainty little dancer outfit with a really cute dog. 
The title of this one is called Lucky Dog. For February, this one is entitled Sleepy Time Girl. Very pretty, very dainty, very cute art. I absolutely love the color of this one. This one is for March, and this one is entitled Bird's Eye View. We've got a Scotty dog here, and it looks like the leash got stuck underneath her dress and is revealing her stockings with a dirty bird looking up her skirt. So we have this one, which is a little bit more risque. She doesn't have a top on. And this one is entitled French Dressing. This one's for April. And that date right there, the 18th, was the day my grandmother was born at this time of year, or this year of this year. We've got this one. It says sit down stripes for May. She's cut paint on her from the bench, which clearly she didn't see the wet paint sign. We've got this one that says look what I've got. We've got three point landing for the month of July. We have on defense for August. I really like this one too with the old car. This one is entitled Double Trouble. I guess the air pump wasn't doing its job on the car so it inflated the girl's dress and you can see part of her panties and she looks a little surprised there. I love this one too. This one's called Payoff. I like the girl's uh, outfit there, the lingerie that she's wearing. This girl kind of reminds me of Judy Garland in a way, maybe even Shirley Temple, just by the face maybe. So this one's for November and it's entitled A Hitch in Time. And the last page is entitled No Stairs and this is for December. Again, just really, really timeless, classic Elfgren art. They don't make them like they used to, and I will forever love these calendars, and I will continue to collect them until I am ancient. Okay, so this item I actually picked up off of Etsy. It came from a seller who bought and sold certain issues of Playboy magazines as well as the centerfolds for different years. For a long time, I've really wanted to get my hands on the January 1955 issue of Playboy magazine because that is where you will find this very, very famous pose of Betty Page. And of course, I have it censored because you know why. And I just don't see why I need to spend a few hundred dollars on a magazine at this time. Maybe in the near future, but just not right now. So for the $7.37 this image cost me, I'm not going to sweat it. Now, I don't know what era this particular magazine page is from. I would assume probably from the 50s because that's when this image was taken. This probably came out of like another men's magazine of some sort at one point in time. I did ask the person who sold this to me if she knew what magazine this came out of. I don't know that it was Playboy. It could be some other man's magazine of that year. But I really don't know. She didn't know. If you guys happen to know, please leave it in the comments because what I plan on doing with this is maybe putting it in a frame and like having it matted and maybe just putting it out at Christmas time when I'm not living at home. For now, it's probably just going to go in my book of pinup because it is rather risque and I can't have something out like this right now as much as I love it. But like I said, it was spend $500 or more on the magazine or spend $7.37 on just the image of Betty Page alone from a magazine and I felt that of course if you put the $500 and the $7 on the scale the $7 would rise higher than the 500 so for now this was very well worth what I spent. 
Okay, so we are now getting into the friend mail slash live sale portion of this video. These items, which include these really, really awesome but naughty pinup cards, came from Katie over at Vintage and Vinyl. She's rather new to the YouTube community, and I would really like it if you all would check out her channel and subscribe to it. I will link it down in the description box so you can check it out. She has bought several Coke trays from me in the last, what, last year and a half or so? And she is very, very supportive of all of us. Uh, she is in a lot of our live sales, if you haven't been on any of them. And please show her some love. She doesn't have very many subscribers right now, so please check out her channel, subscribe to it. I'm sure she's going to be working on putting out some more content, as we all are, especially during these unfortunate times. So Katie, I do want to say thank you very much for sending me this stuff. It is very much appreciated. I love it. And I will be adding these to my vintage paper euphemera. So what's in here, as I mentioned before, they are, I think it's pronounced Gady, uh, pinup model cards. They are nude, so I will not be sharing them in this video for obvious reasons. But these were actually her grandfather's. And at the time, these were put in a drawer, at least according to Katie, by her grandfather, and they were never to be um, put out because her grandmother, I think, would have been a little horrified from what she's told me if she knew what kind of images were on these cards. But with that, she sent me some really cool print ads, like I just mentioned. This one over here with the um, vending machine on it is from 1948. This one is really cool. This one's from 1962 with the Coca-Cola floats, I guess you would call them. I think I like this one the most, the Halloween one from 1964. I love the jack-o'-lantern's face. I love the Coke bottles on the sides of the couple. So this is really, really cool. So Katie, I would like to say thank you for these. And she also sent me a really awesome card which I will go ahead and read to you and hope she doesn't mind. There's nothing really too personal in here. I like the font of the stamp up there. It says, Vinny, thank you so much for the awesome content you make for YouTube. You find some amazing things. Here are the pinup playing cards I talked about sending you. The box has seen better days, but the cards look brand new. I have also enclosed some Coca-Cola print ads. Voila! I thought you would like. One features Halloween time and has a cool pumpkin on it. I hope you stay safe and please know I'm sending my best wishes to you and your family during this time. I can't wait to see more YouTube content. Your videos have really boosted my spirits and have helped keep me entertained. Best wishes, Katie. P.S. I am enjoying my Elaine girl tray. It's already hanging up. So as I mentioned before, please check out Vintage and Vinyl her YouTube channel link is down below in the description box. And Katie, I would like to thank you for being a supporter of my channel as well. Because it wouldn't be what it is without viewers and subscribers such as yourself. So you all know that sometimes when I see something that another YouTube reseller or thrifter would like, I like to pick it up for them, especially if it is a good price. And one of the things that I like to pick up a lot when I see them are the vintage zippers. If you watch Jen over at the Pudgy Picker, she and her sister Kim have a booth. And her sister, who is a very, very talented sewer, as well as Jen herself, she will make purses, um, I think she makes crossbody bags and the um, coin purses out of the vintage zippers which I think is very, very creative and putting those vintage sewing materials to good use. And I sent a bunch of them right before the quarantine hit. And I was a little worried that I wasn't gonna, or that they wouldn't get them because sometimes when I send items out, I don't pay attention to the tracking very much. 
but I was very, very happy to hear that they got them, and they sent me something really awesome in the mail. And let me tell you, it's 100% me, and I will definitely be putting this to good use, and I was blown away. I absolutely love it. How stinking cool is this mask? You all know, as you just saw from the pinup stuff I share with you, that I love this kind of stuff. It's a mask that she made me. It's got really dainty, cute pinup girls on it. I think this is actually vintage fabric, but I could be wrong. I don't know for sure, but I know I would love to get my hands on one of these and maybe make like some curtains or something like that. But I did post a picture of myself wearing this on Instagram. I will go ahead and insert a photo of me wearing it right here so you guys can take a look. But this is just awesome and it is very, very fitting to me. When and if my workplace opens up very soon, I will definitely be wearing this every day because I love this thing so much. So Jen and Kim, thank you so, so much for thinking of me and what I absolutely love. So as many of you all know, we are not able to go out and thrift right now due to the global pandemic that is hitting our world so hard right now. So with that, a lot of the resellers that you all watch and that I watch are hosting live sales with the hope that we make a little extra money and that we clear out space for when we are able to go out and acquire new things. So. I think one of the very first live sales that I was on, it was uh, Misty's over at Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, and I picked up a couple of things with the intent of keeping them for myself. But I think I will pass on both of these items to a better home, and I already have a home for one of these items. Misty has a bunch of these, what she calls, saucy books. This one is entitled Money to Burn, and it's by Peter B. Kin? Kine? So, Michael Todd or Michael McGargle, this should be in the mail to you by the time that this video is uploaded. So I will be sending this your way since I offered it to you, and I feel that you will appreciate this a whole lot more than I. I will. So be on the lookout for that in the mail. So this was another really fun piece that I picked up from Misty's live sale. It's these two vintage chalkware heads and they have hooks on the bottom so you can hang things from them. Overall they're in pretty good shape but as expected with old chalkware there are some places with paint chips and some chunks missing, like out of this girl's head here. When she shared these, I thought originally they looked like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, but to me, it almost looks like maybe Gene Harlow or the Monopoly Man. I do like them, but I think I may go ahead and include them in my own live sale. And she said she doesn't mind if other people resell them. If this was something that you missed out on in Misty's sale, please be on the lookout for it at mine. I'm not going to ask too much more than what she sold them to me for. And I think I paid $12.75 for the set, which I thought was pretty fair. But since I would rather pass them on to somebody who would appreciate them a whole lot more, I think I might just up the price by maybe like $4.25 or $3.25. So I might just ask $16 for the pair. So if you missed out on these in Misty's sale, I will be selling them in mine and passing the fun on to you. So we did wind up going to the flea market this past Sunday. And it was really awesome to kind of have a small sense of normalcy going to this place. We did have to wear masks as the um, place instated due to what's going on right now. I spent $21 at this place 
and then we also hit another indoor market and the only problem with that place is that the selection doesn't really tend to change that often of course people do bring in some stuff prices are overall okay it's it's kind of like indoor yard sale where people just leave their stuff and then it sits for a long time and collects dust or it's fresh inventory and it's completely clean i think i spent what did i spend there it wasn't very much like maybe five dollars i don't think i bought anything for like resale that's worth a lot of money from there but it's all right and then i bought my brother like this cleaner like it's like a something that helps remove the condensation from your windshield something like that for the same price as this uh first item i'm gonna share with you all which is this 1999 jemmy big mouth billy bass it was three dollars and i know that these for whatever reason can sell really well if they work and this one does at least it turns on and it starts singing i don't know if he turns i'll have to test it again just to make sure i'm not gonna play the music because i don't want to get a copyright strike but yeah this was the one of the first few things that i picked up and i'm not going in particular order i'm just or in any particular order i'm just showing what i can and i'm saving my favorite thing for last so i bought this off of thrifting adventures is a uh, live sale got a stamp on here for patent pending and then it's got this circle with an n in it i don't think that this is a black americana creamer and my dad doesn't think it is either because it doesn't really have the stereotypical look of that so i can't even remember what i spent on this maybe it was like three dollars four dollars but i thought he was kind of cool and i just i i just think it would be really neat and i'm not some clown stuff is okay, some of them are a tad bit creepy, but I'll take it for what it is. Okay, so these next two items I paid $5 for. First one being this The True Story of the Beatles book. So this was $2.50, and as you can see, it is not in the greatest shape at all. Um, and I did look it up, and I was really surprised to see that this book is not worth a ton of money. But I definitely think it's cool. I was originally going to sell it if it was worth something, but it was one of those things where you have to buy it when you see it, So, and it was cheap enough. I might just hold on to it, because I've got a couple of books that feature stuff like this, so I'm perfectly okay with holding on to that. Or because it's not worth a lot of money on eBay, maybe I'll throw it in my live sale. We'll see. Now this is also came with that book, paid $2.50. It's a vintage Easter candy container. I do like finding these occasionally. My favorite ones to find, of course, are the Halloween ones. And this one is in very good shape. It's got embossed or etched into the plastic Happy Easter. And it has an original stamp for it looks like a dollar something. So that's very, very cool. Excuse me just one second, guys. All right, so here's what the first portion of it looks like. Again, just really, really intricate detail into the advertising of the day. I don't know exactly what this person is holding. It looks like just decorative tree, like maybe faux ceramic trees. And then we open it up, and this is where it gets really, really interesting. Look at this. This is just amazing graphic detail of what kind of TV you could get back in 1959. I just thought this was incredibly cool and I did not want to see it go. So we got that one, that's for the 1959 pamphlet. And let me go ahead and show you the one from the 60s, the early 60s. This one has a blue cover and then if we open it up, hopefully it'll fold back into place. Here's the first part of it. And we've got this part. I would love to find a TV kind of like that, or maybe even like that. 
when I get my own place and be able to put my flat screen on top of it and like my game consoles and things just to give it the vintage look but have a more modern up-to-date TV. Oh, it's like a pamphlet pamphlet, that's right. And then we've got this one. I like that TVs back in the day, like these ones, were made to fit in with your furniture. And I know that some people have actually gutted these if they're not in working condition and made them into fish tanks, which I think is very creative. So yeah, that's why I couldn't let those two go because those were really, really cool. Okay, and to conclude this haul video, my favorite thing that I've been looking for for a long, long time and let me go ahead and I will adjust the camera here. I just posted it on Instagram, so if you don't follow me there, you wouldn't know what this was. I have been looking for one of these forever, and I feel like it is the hardest one of this particular item, of these particular items to find. I finally found her. I found my vintage 1971-1972 Avon Mermaid Skin So Soft bottle. I got her for two dollars. And I am beyond ecstatic to have found it because like I said I've been looking for this forever. Anytime I see boxes of vintage Avon bottles I will always go over and look to see if I can find this uh, mermaid also known I think as a sea maiden. It did hold Skin So Soft bath oil, which I did hear has been really, really useful with keeping mosquitoes away, so like a mosquito repellent. The only real issue is the fact that her crown, let's see if it'll focus, maybe it won't, has been broken off, but like I said, with vintage pieces, it isn't really fun if there isn't some kind of defect on it. Now, it isn't blue. All I did was fill it up with water, clean it out as best I could, and then once I felt it was clean enough, I just went ahead and I dropped some blue food dye in there just to color her. And I think she looks really, really good. And for two whole dollars, I will take that because I've been looking for this bottle forever. All right, so here's what the first portion of it looks like. Again, just really, really intricate detail into the advertising of the day. I don't know exactly what this person is holding. It looks like just decorative tree, like maybe faux ceramic trees. And then we open it up, and this is where it gets really, really interesting. Look at this. This is just amazing graphic detail of what kind of TV you could get back in 1959. I just thought this was incredibly cool and I did not want to see it go. So we got that one, that's for the 1959 pamphlet. And let me go ahead and show you the one from the 60s, the early 60s. This one has a blue cover and then if we open it up, hopefully it'll fold back into place. Here's the first part of it. And we've got this part. I would love to find a TV kind of like that or maybe even like that when I get my own place and be able to put my flat screen on top of it and like my game consoles and things just to give it the vintage look but have a more modern up-to-date TV. Oh, it's like a pamphlet pamphlet, that's right. And then we've got this one. I like that TVs back in the day, like these ones, were made to fit in with your furniture. And I know that some people have actually gutted these if they're not in working condition and made them into fish tanks, which I think is very creative. So yeah, that's why I couldn't let those two go because those were really, really cool. Okay, and to conclude this haul video, my favorite thing that I've been looking for for a long, long time, and let me go ahead and I will adjust the camera here. 
I just posted it on Instagram, so if you don't follow me there, you wouldn't know what this was. I have been looking for one of these forever, and I feel like it is the hardest one of this particular item, of these particular items to find. I finally found her. I found my vintage 1971, 1972 Avon Mermaid Skin So Soft bottle. I got her for two dollars. And I am beyond ecstatic to have found it because like I said, I've been looking for this forever. Anytime I see boxes of vintage Avon bottles, I will always go over and look to see if I can find this uh, mermaid, also known I think as a sea maiden. It did hold Skin So Soft bath oil, which I did hear has been really, really useful with keeping mosquitoes away, so like a mosquito repellent. The only real issue is the fact that her crown, let's see if it'll focus, maybe it won't, has been broken off, but like I said, with vintage pieces, it isn't really fun if there isn't some kind of defect on it. Now, it isn't blue. All I did was fill it up with water, clean it out as best I could, and then once I felt it was clean enough, I just went ahead and I dropped some blue food dye in there just to color her. And I think she looks really, really good. And for two whole dollars, I will take that because I've been looking for this bottle forever. Just when I think I'm all done sharing things with you all, I always end up forgetting one thing. So this is a country festive pattern Regent Sheffield multi-purpose magic gadget. It has a stainless steel blade and has about seven different functions on it. So you can slice cake with it, you could use it as a sandwich knife, you can spread peanut butter or other condiments on there. It's a good trimming and mincing knife, sawing joints for turkeys and other birds that we eat, frying pan knife to flip an egg, and scraper for batter and things like that. Now typically these don't really sell for all that much money. But I think because this one has a corning pattern on it, and it is new old stock, I think this might do really, really well. The only real issue with it is this tiny little spot right here where the pattern has kind of come off. But I do think that this might generate some somewhat decent money, maybe $20 on a bad day and maybe $30 on a good day. I'm going to shoot for the 30 and maybe take offers of 20 on it because it is new old stock and it does have a pattern that is not currently listed anywhere on eBay. So that might be a bit of a good sign there. If you happen to be interested in it, you know where to go. The link to my eBay shop is down below in the description. So now that I found the last item that I bought this past weekend, this video is officially done. So I shared these in the live sale and they did wind up selling and I kept one for myself but I thought maybe you guys might like to see what it looks like. So first let me start off by saying it's a double discount stamp book. It was for the double discount stamp company in Fredericksburg, Virginia. This is the back. Really really great images and graphics. I hope whoever bought these is either going to use them in junk journaling, which I guess is kind of a thing now, or is going to resell them in their shop and maybe make a little bit of money off of them. But I just really, really like the images that are in them. I mean, it's just, it's timeless art. They don't make stuff like this anymore. And it's just fun. If I go kind of fast, I'm sorry. I just don't want this to be a long clip for the video. I guess it's duplicates? Yeah, I think these are just duplicates. So you get the picture. It's very, very cool, and the art in these old pamphlets are just fantastic. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. 
All the links to my social media accounts via Instagram are down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.